my wedding ceremony. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, so let's move on to today's business. Today, we'll be discussing uh, emotional intelligence. So I will share my screen now. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not so. Like, now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. It's coming up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So today we'll be looking at mm -hmm. emotional intelligence and uh, in our workplaces. Uh, as we go through the journey of Ten Academy, it's essential for us to to know how to relate with people, how to take care of our own emotions. You know, we are all different. Even here in the academy, I want to believe we all have different personalities. So it is essential for us as individuals to how to relate with people, regardless of their culture, regardless of their background, to ensure we all uh, meet our team's uh, expectations. Uh, please, can you see my slide? It is uh, okay. loading. It's loading. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you see my slide now? Yeah. Okay. Confirm if you can see it now. Yes, it's, it's visible. Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. So emotional intelligence is very important for us, both in our personal and our professional career. Uh, the moment you are relating with people, it is important for you to uh, take note of your emotion and you know also know how to relate with people. Uh, so I have some uh, prompt questions there. So can you share, can anyone unmute his mic to share his or personal experience or scenario where applying emotional intelligence led to a positive outcome? You may have like one or two, just unmute your mic and speak. Just share your personal professional scenario where you apply the emotional intelligence and eventually it led to a positive outcome for you. You can drop a message in the chat also. Anyone? So for me, I think uh, at a particular point in time, I had the scenario whereby I had to uh, settle in for my emotion. And uh, at the end of the day, I think it uh, worked out positively for me. You know, choose between your emotion and maybe uh, the reality. Yeah, so to say. So, and uh, if you know, things for you to do. So, but for me, uh, through my own emotional intelligence, I was able to, you know, let go of my emotion and just face the reality. Though know, it was actually hard to do, but it actually led to something positive for me. So, do we have anyone who also have like similar experience at any point in time? Just on mute so Mike can speak. Okay, I think I will call on someone to say something. So, Abel, can you say something to that? Okay, so uh, I cannot pinpoint is a particular scenario where I used an immune, emotional intelligence. Per se, but I would say, I would say, uh, when working along with people, people might have uh, different personal issues happening within their life. And uh, I will try to assess their mood in order to kind of work along with them or uh, kind of ask 
uh, them to do a, a task for me or help me with something. So the thing is, I will try to analyze their emotional state or how they are functioning uh, throughout the day and find the right time to ask the assist or uh, to ask of the help or to designate the task for them. So I, I don't think it's if, if it's relevant or not, but that's what came to my mind. Yeah, we'll still get to that in our presentation. We'll be discussing about different components of uh, emotional intelligence. But for me, what you just mentioned now is aligned with what emotional intelligence actually means. So, so the next sec second prompt I have here, uh, can anyone recall is a recent situation where you were act um, acutely aware of your emotions? You know, there are times emotion is not about, you know, love alone. It can be about be, be getting overwhelmed with work, empathy with people. So how did this awareness impact actions or decision? Do we have anyone? We actually are running out of time because we started the session late. So if you have anyone to say anything to this, I just indicate or just on mute so I can speak. Any situation where you are aware of your emotions? So I think I also have an experience uh, relative to this where I can say, yes, I was aware of my emotion and uh, how actually, how it impacted my actions and my and my decision. You know, say you want to apply for a job and, uh, you know, you have some, some requirements for the job and according to you, you feel the job description is quite overwhelming for you. Or let's say you have you, you find yourself in a team where you have uh, co-workers, you have team, you have colleagues, and uh, at the end of the day, you are ahead of maybe your your, your age mate, so something like that. You guys are age mate, and you are ahead of your of your team of your of your colleague. And how do you report such colleague? How do you relate to them? How do you uh, feel them without you know being disrespectful? You know, you might be young and you might have like someone who is way, way older than you reporting to you. So how do you handle such uh, emotion? You know, for the other person, it might be difficult for the person to uh, to relate with you. So as a leader, I feel you should. I, I found myself in that shoe and I think I was able to, you know, handle that situation. So that's like a, uh, a prompt for us to, to ensure we all get along with our presentation for today. So these are the outline for today. We'll be looking at emotional And uh, from there, we'll be looking at how can we improve our emotional intelligence at our various places of work. Uh, also, we look at the benefits of emotional intelligence in workplace, looking at today's challenge and uh, the deliverables we are we are all ex we are expecting from you. So, according to the definition we have here, emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotion. Yes, you should be able to for your own emotion. You should be able to recognize when you are tensed. You should be able to recognize when you are overwhelmed. You should be able to recognize your emotion. So you should be able to understand and be able to manage your own emotion. Apart from that, it is not it is not enough to call that emotional intelligence. So it is also uh, you also need to also uh, recognize and understand other people's emotion. So understanding your own emotion is not enough. So you have to ensure you understand people's people around you we also understand even if they are not seeing anything you should be able to deduce from their perhaps their reaction or even their, their facial gesture how they are feeling so that's emotional intelligence you should be able to recognize understand and manage your own emotion alongside with other people's emotion as well as the ability to manage their responses to those emotions you know you know people someone is not happy and Point in time, so we have emotional intelligence must be nurtured because we are we always evolve as people. So emotional intelligence is not static; it's something that can be improved upon. So some people start out as 
uh, they don't really have you know how to understand people they always have issues with people they can't really maintain relationship with people so people like that if they are so conscious about uh that kind of reaction that yeah why can't i keep a relationship with people why can't i keep like two years five years a formidable friendship with people well, how can i improve on it? so people like that can always improve on okay i should be able to do this i should be able to do this so it evolves you know we, the, the more you relate to people the more you have to you know be conscious of your is it actually important for us to look into so a story says that uh, shows that individuals with high emotional intelligence are 75 percent more likely to be successful in their careers compared to those with lower emotional intelligence scores 75 percent that's like on the that's on the increase side on the high side so i have some uh some research here some research points here uh that okay why like more on that so if you look at this first point here, a story from UC Berkeley says that determines that emotional intelligence was four times better at predicting a person's success than measuring what high Q. We we are still going to get to know, knowing the difference between intelligence quotient and uh, and uh, emotional quotient. But for the overview of it, um, intelligence quotient deals with the brain. So that's different. That's like the basic difference between the two. So, but according to this study, it says that it's four times better at predicting a person's success, more than four times more than the IQ. So we have people with very, very sharp IQ, very, very high IQ. But if such person doesn't have emotional intelligence, it might be, it might not be so beneficial to that kind of person in, when it comes to you know, career success. So the second one here is uh, on average, those who have higher emotional intelligence earn $29,000 more than people who have low emotional intelligence these are statistics right so when looking at top performers at companies 90 percent of them have greater emotional intelligence so which means for you to be a great performer at your company regardless of your technical skill you should be able regardless of your technical skill if you had it up if you had some uh you have high emotional intelligence you'll be a top performer uh because uh, there are times that you know as a person you know how to relate to people you empathize with people so even given review you know how to you know assess people how to give feedback all those things are essential so you'll be able to keep relationship with people and uh, you know at the end of the day let's say you are maybe your performing your performance is based on okay let's give who is the most valuable person of the year based on votes with that kind of react with that kind of emotional intelligence you'll be able to you know get more votes from people in addition to your you know to your technical progress so the next one here we have on, on average, those who have higher emotional intelligence and internal study by PepsiCo found that managers with stronger emotional intelligence at work had performed their annual revenue goal by up to 20 percent yes why is this one uh very realistic is this you know when you have emotional intelligence you know how to manage your people as a manager you are you know how to manage your people you know when your people are tense you know when they're not happy you know how to relate with them they can you know you are going to build a team that is ready to this statistics is uh very very important for us okay that uh strong uh managers with stronger emotional intelligence at work at perform the annual revenue goal so and if you have a, if you can build a formidable team a team that trusts you as a manager yes you will definitely you know reach your goal in no time so different between uh emotional quotient and uh iq as i've said earlier if you look at the Yeah, we have love we have a uh, technical uh just like gears here so iq deals with the brain why eq which is the emotional emotional question deals with your feeling this with your emotion so these are the few uh differences we have for eq self-awareness iq is with logic 
This is self-management. This one deals with mathematical reasoning. If you look at this, there are the things that do with the brain. So we have responsible decision making. We have spatial reasoning, verbal reasoning, relationship skills. Yeah, you know, even here at Ten Academy, I think we are like two months or three months to the program, and we still have people who are yet to have this uh, collaboration with other people. So you should be able to build relationship with people. That is due to your emotional intelligence. Be able to know how to relate with people, how to keep relationship. So, and uh, the last one is social awareness and memory and recall. So that's for IQ. IQ is with the brain and EQ is with the feeling. So we have some uh, components of emotional intelligence. We have five of them. They used to be four, but further research uh, add up uh, makes them five. So what are they? We have uh, we have self-awareness, we have uh, self-regulation, social skills, empathy, and motivation. So uh, my next slide gives like, how can you improve on each of these? But to give a general overview of, okay, what is self-awareness, what is self-regulation, social skills, empathy, and motivation. So I'll pick up, I'll pick each of these components one by one and, you know, give like a brief explanation on them. So for self-awareness, as you have known, as I, as I explained earlier, that, okay, self-awareness is about you, you knowing yourself, you're able to recognize, you're able to understand your own feeling. So it involves the ability to recognize one's feeling and emotion, right? So if you have high awareness, high self-awareness, you can, if you pay, if you pay attention to it, I can tell you that, yeah, it gives you a lot of benefit to know, okay, the kind of decision you make, you want to make. So people with this, with high self-awareness, they understand that their emotions have a close impact on how they respond to certain situation. So without, okay, so they know that making such a, such a sudden decision during highly emotional moments, it might lead to negative consequence down the road, you know, as 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 individuals, there are times we get emotional. That yeah, if we should take decision at that moment, it's going to be uh, at the end of the day when you are emotional, when you when you are calm, you won't be you won't be happy with the kind of decision you've uh, you've taken. So well, if you are aware of the emotion, you know yeah, at this point when I'm uh, in this particular emotional state, you know that you are not supposed to take some critical decision at that particular uh, instance. So people that are, that knows about their, that are, that are safe aware about their emotion, people like that always prevent themselves uh, from taking such a drastic uh, uh, decision. So safe awareness it also involves noting what a person's particular strength and weakness. So as an individual, you should be able to know. Uh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Please let me continue with the presentation. So as an individual, you should be able to you should be able to know your strengths and you should be able to know your uh, your weaknesses. So that's one of your self-awareness. So even in interviews, if they ask you, okay, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, it takes some level of self-awareness to, to be able to tell them, yes, I have social so, so strengths and I have these weaknesses. So now these are the things I'm doing to uh to develop myself in this weakness. So that is self-awareness. So for self-regulation, so after you are after you are aware of your emotion, so you should be able to know how to regulate your emotion. That is what self-regulation means. So that's like the second component of emotional intelligence. You know how you know yourself. So the second thing is how do you regulate your emotion? So it involves managing feeling and learning how to adapt to different situations. So that is like, like adapt adaptability. You should be able to have you should have adaptability as a, as one of your uh, key strengths so this regulating your emotion knowing how to how to regulate your emotion is going to let you adapt to different situations different scenario so you can should you should think about self awareness as planning and uh, self regulation as execution of plan just put it that way that self awareness is just like you are planning on something and the self regulation is like okay you want to execute that uh that plan so that's basically what your self your, your self regulation means you control your emotions instead of allowing your emotion to control you so you should be able to have power over your emotion so this the uh the third one i would like to explain here 
is social skills. So as I mentioned earlier that, yeah, we are three, you are three months or two months into, into this training, this cohort, and uh, we still have people still working, uh, still working individually, still working uh, on solo. Yeah. So still working on your own. So you should be able to, you know, create this kind of bond with people such that even after 10 Academy, you can still reach out via LinkedIn or any other platform to reach out, okay, to ask, to ask after them. So social skill is just our ability to, you know, have uh, to consider on improving social skills. So it's just your ability to react with people. Not everyone knows how to communicate with people, how to keep conversation with people. So you should be able to, ha you should have, you should be able to have these, uh, these social skill is give just to give them kind of kind of word of encouragement even at your workplace giving some kind of word and word of encouragement can promote bond between you and your co-worker so this element is also involves doing how to react in social situations right just like our community building session is like a like a platform developed by 10 academy to ensure we have a we have this social commitment together this social interaction together so if there is a situation where listening will be more than to you know, you should be able to know how to listen. If there is a situation when to chat, if there is a situation you need to you need to call, you should be able your your intuition should tell you at this time I, I think this conversation does not require chat. This conversation is about you know out jumping on the call with your coworker to you know to ensure you guys get things done. So social skills basically you can relate it, you can tie it to your communication skill. Yeah, so. I think that is that suffices for that. So for empathy, I think uh, empathy to me, I want to believe empathy is just like the uh, the soul of this emotional intelligence. For you to be able to relate with people very very well, you should be able to empathize with them, especially if you are a manager or yeah, if you are if you are working a team, you should be able to empathize with people. So uh, those that try to demonstrate emotional intelligence at work, they show like high degree of empathy. If you, are if you are talking about emotional intelligence, you can't take out empathy. It is very, very important. So if you are becoming, if you are empathetic, it means that to be able to see what people are going through, even without them seeing anything, it means you can empathize with people with just by looking at them, understand how, how is this person feeling. So you can empathize with them. That means understanding how they feel. That was the basic uh, um, meaning of that. So. It is important that even in businesses, there are times to make decisions. Sure that yeah, if you want to make a decision as a manager, you should be able to know that okay, this decision you are making is it going to affect your coworker, is it going to affect your colleagues at work? Even if you are not a manager, if As I said earlier, that emotional intelligence components, they are they were four in number before uh research made them five. So motivation is a uh is the last one added to the list, and uh, is the element that involves the drive of a person. That is what we call motivation. I want to believe. I want to believe you won't be able to go through week zero so that's the self-drive that's his drive so there are many sources of motivation it can be wealth it can be fame it can be power it can be you know even poverty can be a motivation to some people because they want to you know break the chain of poverty perhaps in their family
please apologies for that please can you see my screen now okay so let me continue i can i stopped that motivation So I said, getting to this level at 10 Academy means we all have some level of motivation in us. So, and uh, there is only, so, and I said that motivation can, it has different sources, it can be wealth, it can be fame, it can be power, even it can be poverty because some people want to, you know, they are motivated because of the level of power, poverty at home and they want to break that chain of poverty. So they don't have any excuse and just to get motivated. So, but for people with high emotional intelligence, simply doing a good job is enough for them to get everyone. So, to get up every morning, you know, showing up at an academy every week, it means you have some level of motivation in you. So, the motiv motivation comes from, you know, enjoying what you do. And there are times that even if you don't enjoy what you do, because of the uh, of the source, just like someone who, uh, who wants to break the chain of poverty, even though if you don't like what you are doing, you should be able to because you are motivated then you won't but you won't even look at okay i don't really enjoy this thing because your high will be on the goal so also it is essential when you follow your passion you know, for your passion even without looking at any materialistic benefits attached to it passion is enough to you to give you the level of motivation you need so these are the components of emotional intelligence and uh just that's the general overview of everything we have self-awareness, self-regulation, social skills, empathy, and uh, motivation. So how do we improve emotional intelligence in the workplaces? We have, I have stated uh, different ways on, on how we can improve that. For self-awareness, we have, for self-awareness, so you can talk with employees and listen to what they have to say. So you can assess the emotional weaknesses also. So if you have weaknesses, you should be able to assess your weaknesses. And also in addition to this, you should be able to assess your uh, your emotional strengths also. And why emotional weaknesses come here is that, I know at, work, at your workplace, your weakness might be a, uh, a disadvantage for you kind of. So, but if you know your, your weakness, you know how to develop or you know how to work on it. So that is why it comes out, okay, if you can assess your emotional weakness, then is uh is an is a way for you to improve on your emotional intelligence. So we can you can create a money routine. So you can create a money routine that puts you in right mode to start the day. So that from people that in the morning, especially those that resume to work physically, uh they are not always in the right mood. But if you can create a routine to ensure that yes, you are in good state, you are in good you are in good mood, then you can always work it's, that can always improve you uh improve your emotional intelligence so you can also avoid making decisions at height of an emotional moment so as i said earlier that there are times if you are if you are safe aware of your emotion there are times that when you are emotional you don't want to take some decisions you don't like to take decisions so when you avoid making decisions when you, in your emotional state then you that means you are improving on your emotional intelligence so you can create a daily shared schedule that ensures work done ahead of time so the people that can procrastinate and if you know you're a type that can procrastinate is also a, a way for you to okay if you can if you can create a schedule ahead to ensure you get your things done then it's also a way of you uh managing your own emotion It's a way of you uh, assessing yourself so for self-regulation as we said earlier that regulation is just like uh you controlling your emotion instead of your emotional con emotion controlling you so you should understand that many things are out of your control. There are some things that are out of your control. There are some things that are within your reach. So you should be able to understand those things. Relieve stress with hobbies or meditation exercise. So it's just a way of controlling your emotion. When you are emotional, when you maybe when you are emotional, when you are Maybe so maybe through reading, through watching movies, or any other activity you like to do. So the next thing we have there is you should take a moment to pause before responding to criticism. Not everyone can, not everyone has that 
uh, mind, and if not everyone can, handle criticism. We have some people, let me give you an example of politi of, uh, of uh, celebrities. You know, if you know any celebrities, at some point, people will criticize them, but it's part of their own way of life to know how to handle such criticism. But even here in our own workplaces, there are times that, yeah, your manager can criticize you for one thing or the other, so you should be able to know how to handle such criticism without, you know, uh, getting frustrated. So you should take a moment to pause before responding to it. Otherwise, you can, you know, give responses outside the context and, you know, get more, uh, get excluded with your emotion. So call out toxic environment in a constructive manner. The environment that are toxic for you, just let your, maybe your coworker know that, yeah, this thing you are doing, I don't really like it. So just try to ensure you are constructive about it and respectful also. So for empathy, you should take time to see a situation from another person's point of view. Yeah, not sometimes you just have to keep your own, keep your own opinion or keep your own point to yourself. Try to give people, try to make excuses for people. I think through that, you should be able to keep good relationship with people. When you give people excuses, not all the time you have to, you know, get on all the, uh, get over the point and say, okay, take everything to, to heart. So try to try to give people excuses also. Try to make excuses for people. I think it goes a long way. So list out the potential outcome of your decision and how it affects team members. So you should also get to know your teammates and employer. So knowing your teammates very well makes you, you can, can give you that ability, knowing them, give you ability to empathize with them. At least there are times you can reach out to people, know more about their background if there is need for that. So that will give you ability to, you know, to, to empathize with them. So recognize people's input also. So if you are working in a team and uh, you are you are following number and you are given different tasks, you know, a, a tree cannot make a forest, right? So in such situation, always try to recognize people's input. Even though if you are the major guy on the team, try to recognize those that are now up to you in technical, technical wise, try to recognize their input, thank them for voicing an opinion. If you find yourself in a round table, always regardless of how shallow the opinion might be, see to recognize such opinion. That's like that's that is showing empathy to them and it can also improve them also. So regularly praise other people's work and encourage them even if be. So it's not not all the time you have to you know give that kind of bitter bit bitter uh bit, bit, bitter criticism on people's work, bit, bitter bitter review on people's work. Try to praise them, try to encourage them. So that those are ways of you know empathizing with your coworker. So for the motivation part, always try to focus on to focus on the positives. Uh, don't be negative. Always try to focus on the positive. That okay, regardless of how hard the academy is gonna be, then I'm still going to pull through. So that's like you focusing on the positives. So follow what you are passionate about. As I said earlier, when you follow your passion, you don't need to you don't need any material or you don't need to look at the goal before you you know get help every day and you know to show up so that's yeah you are going to get there so that is how to how, how to improve on the um, the motivation part of our of the component of emotional intelligence so the last one here is the social social skill so for social skills, some people are they are uh, they are timid. Some people are timid. They are introverts. But however, they all these things can be improved upon. So you can practice public speaking. You can be an active listener at all times. You can pay attention to non-verbal cues also from people. So always try to deduce from people's emotion from people just looking at you. Try to understand what and what you are uh, what what they have on their mind. Then speak to them. So those are things you can do to improve emotional intelligence. And all these things should you, it's not even must for you to wait until you get on the job before you can start practicing all these things. You can practice all these things uh, at any time, even at your place or even at home. You can talk to your friend. You can, you know, anywhere, anywhere you find yourself, the, the fact that you are relating with people means you can apply emotional intelligence. So what are the benefits of emotional intelligence in our workplaces? So you can exchange better ideas without misunderstanding and inappropriate remarks. As I said earlier, 
you stop me on something and one of your teammates give uh, a shallow idea on something or even an idea that is out of the context instead of you yelling at a person you should try as much as possible to at least encourage so but that's mean that is that's one of the uh component of your that means you are you are you have high emotional intelligence when you can relate to people even regardless of the idea you are still uh giving them the encouragement that yes next time they will still try to say something and they'll try they'll get better with time so with emotional intelligence is going to ensure that people will exchange their ideas without misunderstanding and inappropriate remarks so it gives it makes uh decision making better and also improve performance because performance can definitely will definitely in increase when you have a team that when you have a team that is not afraid of talking to one another you have a team that empathizes with one another so all these things are essential in any team's uh, progress so i uh, that's the presentation for now so we'll be looking at the challenge we have for the week uh, for this career exercise so and i would like to emphasize on this that yeah after this presentation we should try to ensure we go through the career document because it has a number it has more information about this challenge because we've noticed during grading that some trainees want like some of some trainees didn't check uh didn't check our career document they'll just go ahead and you know just go and do something without following the guidelines stated in the career challenge so uh, we should try as much as possible to ensure we go to the, the career challenge document and uh, follow all the instructions stated there. So we'll be looking at four scenarios in this challenge. Four scenarios, and the, each of those scenarios we have like an ex we have an explicit explanation on them. And uh, so for the first one, we have feedback delivery. So we have a more comprehensive. Uh, challenge description of this scenario let me show you that here so this is this is the scenario one but i just try to give a summary so that i can have a simple slide so we have you are you are the team lead and what's the challenge so you have you have consistent missing of deadline by some teammates that is some of your teammates are missing deadlines consistent consistently and this attitude has affected your milestone delivery to your client and however these clients have like you have breakdown of uh, of your payments and each of your, your payment is always done based on milestones so failure to approve the milestone means there is no payment for your team and your team is you, you are still it's still a growing team you need the fund to at least to to pay your to pay your staff and also to incur for some other expenditures so that's the general overview and uh, so how do you give how do you provide feedback to these teammates with that are missing deadlines consistently so these are the questions you should answer how would you approach delivering constructive feedback to the team member what consideration would you take into account to ensure the feedback is well received and don't forget your emotional intelligence here yeah. so and also i would like to state categorically here yeah, that yes i know this question can just be copy and paste uh in chat gpt and you know you get your feedbacks then you copy it there and you know put it in your slide please we don't want uh stuff like this we want uh we want genuine answers not ai generated answers please so that is that so then on leadership challenge this is in the second scenario so yours is your role you're only a senior engineer so but in your team you 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 joined your team two years ago as a junior engineer with some other colleagues but with time in your positive attitude to work you climb the car you, you climb the ladder to the position of a senior engineer within three years and however together now reporting to you that is you are now the line manager so you know at the, so at some point you are, they are you are experiencing some resistance from them from this your colleagues who are reporting to you because you guys are on the same level but now you are not ahead of them and you are, they are you are experiencing some resistance from them so we want to how will you do address the resistance and, and build trust 
with your team? How would you, what, what are you going to do? How would you assign tax to them or give them feedback? How would you address this issue if your colleagues did not meet quality standards or deadline? You know, they are your colleagues used to be, used to be on the same level, but now you're not ahead of them. You want to talk to them anyhow. So how would you address to this issue if they are not meeting standard and you are not meeting deadlines? So what leadership qualities of behavior would you emphasize to gain their support? So that's the second scenario. So the third scenario here is you are a team lead and what is your challenge? Your team has completed a challenging project. However, one team member felt their contribution were not adequately recognized during the celebration event. So maybe he was maybe he's like the main guy in the project, but at the end of the day, the recognition, the recognition. would you take to acknowledge and appreciate individual contribution within the team so that is the third scenario so the fourth one here is your team is working against a tight deadline with high stress level so one team member is struggling to cope with the pressure and is showing sign of burnout so as a team leader how would you support the team members or even as a teammate how would you support the team member experiencing burnout what preventive measures would you implement to address stress and promote healthier work environment. So those are the four scenarios. And uh, so these are the important instructions we want you to take note of. We want to provide detailed non-AI generated response, even that is not here, to each scenario based on your understanding of emotional intelligence concepts. And also we want you to ensure your answers reflect the thoughtful consideration of emotion and interpersonal dynamics in the given scenarios. So thank you for listening. And uh, I will open, thank you for listening. Uh, we are way out of time. And uh, please, let's ask our questions. Uh, you can unmute the mic or drop your message in the chat. If you have any question, any clarification to make. Thank you. Questions, reaction, come on guys. Or clarification. I will call on two names, just to ensure we understand everything uh, we've explained so far. When you understand the challenge given. So Ayaya, how do you feel about the tutorial yes, session? Yes. And uh, no, it's, any, it's any comments? Clear. It's clear. It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, Rodolfi, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Rodolfi. Biniam, unmute your mic. Biniam. Elias. Elias, yes, you can write, please. You can write. You can write. Abraham. Alexander. Alexander. Yes, yes. Yeah, 
So any any clarification, any addition, observation? Okay, thank you. I have uh, understand what you present. So for the time being, you know, I have no any question. I have understand. Thank you. Okay. So if you all understand everything we've presented, if you understand. Yes. If you understand everything we've everything we've explained, the career challenge, can we have some thumbs up? Then we call it a day. Now? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So the deadline for this submission is on Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC. Uh, we look forward to seeing your submissions on 10X. And enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye.